the chains that we have are the chains of our limiting beliefs. The old programming of not enough, I can't, the restrictions we put on our expectations that things have to be this way or have to be this way in order for us to be happy. But we know a greater truth. Now, <clears throat> when I have the title, The Endless Practice, is that exhausting to you by any chance? The Endless Practice of um, Greater Awareness, of Expanding Our Awareness? Well, it's not meant to be exhausting. It's meant to be exciting that we have eternity to be free because we're on this journey of freedom to free ourselves to live in joy and love and peace and harmony because it's possible. It's a whole lot of work and that's why we practice and that's why we have eternity. Thank goodness for that, because you know what? We're in charge. We get to postpone our awareness if we want. We get to postpone it and hold on to all of our baggage of stuff we carry around. We lug around to keep us stuck, miserable, suffering. Now, pain is part of the process of being human, but suffering as long as we carry that bag of expectations and old beliefs that keep us stuck, we're going to be miserable. But there's, of course, hope because we have a teaching that allows us to know there's something more at work. Jesus told us thousands and thousands of years ago that in my Father's house there are many mansions, many planes of existence. And if we think about it, we, Ernest Holmes speaks in so many places about the eternal upward spiral of evolution. And that's what's called waking up when we know a greater truth. There's something more going on than we can see right here in this moment. Um, <clears throat> the Quran, which is the uh, Islam sacred text, which they believe is a direct revelation from God, says, God has made many heavens one on top of the other. Now, wouldn't that be the same thing that we say, the evolutionary process, our awakening consciousness? All the mystics understand that we're on this journey and we're on it together and we want to help each other. That we, it's not a place we arrive at, expanded awareness, greater awareness. It's something we grow. We grow that awareness from inside of us. Now, <clears throat> um, this is Ernest Holmes says, there is something to which we must awake and that discovery of something already exists within. So our journey, yes, we want to bring the greater possibility that's out there, but it's in here where we grow that knowing. We can postpone it, as I said, if we want to. It can take as long as you want. You've got eternity. So if you love those old limiting beliefs and they're part of who you are and how you describe yourself, you know, oh, I'm limited. I can't do that. I'm not enough. You know, if those things are part, and I've been there. I remember that part of my vocabulary for sure. It takes the practice to learn we are pretty darn amazing and we are really, really strong. Um, <clears throat> Rumi says, that cute 14th century mystic, says, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? Move outside of the tangle of your fear thinking. Think about it. The tangle of your fear thinking. Move outside of it. The door to the sanctuary. That means <clears throat> we talk about the heart being the sanctuary, the temple of God, where we have our wisdom, our divine nature is inside of us. And he says, that door is inside right there. We can open it at any time. It's already unlocked. We just need to open it with our awareness. So <clears throat> I read about a really cool, cool cat. I have the book. We've talked about her before. Her, um, Jean Houston would say, this, this saint is cooking on all her burners. <laughs> I mean, she's ignited by spirit, Hildegard of Bingen. And here's what it says. Here, I mean, imagine somebody in the 12th century. She was a German Benedictine uh, abbess, which is like 
a mother superior, a writer, composer, philosopher, mystic, visionary, a medical writer, and a medical practitioner. That's a lot to do. But anyway, <clears throat> she described what we're calling, we, we call it the divine urge, the inner spark, but she said inside of us is original wisdom. Reminded me of our beautiful Matthew Fox, the, when he said, we're born in original blessing, not original sin. Well, this is what Hildegard was saying, that we have original wisdom in here, but it's like a folded tent. And the journey of awakening is unfolding that tent piece by piece. And that brought a great visual to mind. During COVID, we decided we were going to have our service outside. And we found a tent. <laughs> of course, it didn't come with any instruction manual, kind of like life. But <clears throat> there were four very strong, handsome, intelligent men, my husband including one, out in the back trying to put that tent together. <laughs> it was all these poles. They couldn't figure out what. There were just all these extra poles, and they couldn't get it all together. And it was hysterical, and it reminded me of life. When we have all these different stories about life, and we don't know where to, we get confused. But I will tell you, we had our saviors arrived. Randy Wells, he brought us an easy tent to get up and down, and he put it up. And Rob Coran brought us the stage, and Sue put up the, Sue and um, Griselda put up the backdrop, and they got that done as, you know, we brought wisdom in. You know, we brought the wisdom in. But I was say, laughing about, what, a, what an idea, we have that tent inside of us, and we have all these extra pieces around there, and if we can just let go, get rid of some of that stuff we've put in there, we can get our wisdom built. And <clears throat> the kingdom of God is a state of consciousness, and I love this, where our body, mind, and spirit are in alignment with divine harmony. Our body, line, mind, and spirit. Now, I don't want to feel like or make anyone feel like I'm having a spiritual bypass here, that we just have to have greater awareness and everything works out because working out is, might be a little bit different than what we think. There is no uh, escaping difficulty. It's part of being alive. Um, Mark Nepo writes a lot about this. Difficulty can be awake and, awake and awakening because in every piece of difficulty, in every difficult situation, there is a gift or a tool if we can take and have the patience to discover it. Here's what Mark, Mark Nepo says. He says, we are constantly asked. We're constantly asked. It's that little small voice within to enter the conversation that difficulty opens. Think about this in your life, because I don't think there's anybody here that doesn't have some level of little situation, because that's what life's about. We're just moving through these ups and downs and ins and outs. So to have the conversation that difficulty opens until it reveals, until it reveals the gift or tool it is carrying. I think in order to do this, in order to really sit with the difficulty, to be there, and be patient enough to hurt, to feel bad, to feel hopeless sometimes, it takes vulnerability. We have to be able to sit with that. If you think about a petal, and um, as you were saying, Marianne, the flower doesn't know what it, it doesn't choose to be a rose or a tulip, but it still knows it's meant to grow just like we are. And it needs vulnerability because it knows the sun, the light, the dawn is there, what it needs to fully express itself. So it has the vulnerability to open its petal little by little. The hawk has the courage to spread its wings to touch the sky. If you and I are going to have the vulnerability to move through this life, and find the gifts in the, in the difficult times, we're going to need to be vulnerable. We're going to need to find vulnerability to be a practice, to be vulnerable enough in times of confusion. There's the practices, uncertainty and confusion, to have patience, to, have the, to slow down and take a breath, again, till your mind 
your body and your spirit are in alignment with something bigger. And if your challenge right now is finding an opportunity for something more, you know, we want, we want to do something. We want, oh, we, maybe that more is already there. You already know what you want to do and what you want to create, or you don't know yet. The, you're there, but you feel the opportunity. It's trusting. It's allowing the heart to absolutely know that we are divinely guided. There's something greater than we are right now. You know, this whole thing about evolution and moving and difficulty and joy, I can think of a day 31 years ago that was such a joyous day. It was so fun. Um, I was teaching at the time, and it was a day off, and I had the girls, and we were going to go out school shopping, and they could each invite a friend, and we went to the mall and put things on hold, and it was such a fun day. Oh, my gosh, we were having so much fun. And Tara, our oldest, 15, wanted to make dinner, so we stopped by the market and got stuff for burritos, came home, and she was making dinner. And now, I need to give you a little uh, preface to this. Both the girls, now, Deanna hadn't done it yet. She was 12 at the time. But both our girls took the Foundations of Science of Mind at 13. So they knew that they knew a lot about this. Well, um, Deanna at that time at 12 had gotten it from os osmosis of us, but Tara had already taken her classes. So we sit down to dinner, and Tara goes to hand me my burrito, and she says, looking right in my eyes, Mom, do you believe when you're finished your work on this plane of existence, you can go at any time to do more important work elsewhere? And I said, of course, yes. And it was two hours later that she made her transition. But what a gift for me. What a gift. Boy, hardest thing, my faith was tested. I can remember for a year, four months, three days, and I think five hours, I had a hole in my, just in my whole being, and I didn't think it would ever go away, and I remember when it did. But what came out of that is me knowing, number one, without question ever, that love never, ever dies. Never. And that life is eternal. We can find gifts in every situation, however difficult they are. I just want each of us to know, without question, that we are divinely guided. And when Gretchen was singing, and she just, in that knowing that that we are always filled and surrounded by God and good and love. There's never a time we're not. And oftentimes we just need to be broken open so we can take our whole consciousness and build it in a new and advanced way. Um, <clears throat> oh, wrong page. When we talk about the journey of becoming, it's the blessed, it's the practice, the endless practice of keeping our heart open. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they see God. It's when we can go to that place, not in our actual beating heart, but the heart that is our inner sanctuary, the temple of God that we have. And we can rest there and find peace. Uh, we don't arrive, we grow, but we become more alive as we get closer and closer to that mystery we call God. I've said from probably the first service we had here 24 years, some years ago, uh, 24 years ago, some days, I said uh, the Rumi poem, out between ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. When a soul lies down in that grass, ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. That's unity. That's love. That's our journey. Our journey is to be in that grass and that field. The good news is it doesn't stop there. When we arrive in that place, when we're fully immersed in the oneness, our oneness with God, each other, life, we get to keep on going and growing in beautiful ways. And that, one, that right there to me is the freedom we seek. Now at this stage of our 
awareness. We're not going to be there all the time, but I hope we can touch it together. I can't wait to be in that field with you. God bless you all, and so it is.